As future consultants, it is possible that you are going to meet some customers who have very little knowledge or experience with the circular economy. Maybe they don't even know what the concept really means and they have just heard about it in the news or heard that it's, it's a trend that is coming. So apart from being a consultant or a guide who helps them understand the circularity check process, it is likely that you're going to assume the role of a teacher. A teacher who is going to make an abstract concept tangible and applicable to the context of your customers, but also a teacher who wants to evoke passion and uh, interest in the subject that he or she is teaching. So it is really important that you are capable to explain the concept of circular economy in, in simple terms, in terms that even a beginner can understand. And also, it is super important that uh, you can help your customers understand the benefits that the circular economy can bring uh, to them. With that said, the purpose of this video is to go through the basic concepts of the circular economy and think about how we can explain this topic, go through the benefits that the circular economy offers for small and medium-sized medium companies, and look at some of the trends uh, that are coming and that are going to shape uh, various sectors in the upcoming uh, decades. In trying to explain what a circular economy is to a beginner, it might prove useful to explain what it is not, to explain what the circular economy directly contradicts. On this page, you can see a simplified diagram of the so-called linear economy. It is represented by a simple, straightforward line. In the linear economy, companies extract resources, which are then transformed, processed, and turned into products. These products are then distributed. They find their way somehow to, to the consumers. They utilize these products, consume them, However, most of the time, what is left from these products after the end of their life cycle is waste, materials with no further use. A circular economy, on the other hand, is a consumption and production model which aims to maintain the value of products and materials for as long as possible by returning them into the product cycle at the end of their, at the end of their useful life. A circular economy essentially reduces the need for, uh, for unused uh, raw materials, in other words, virgin materials, in many ways. It aims to use fewer resources and ensure that the already extracted resources are in use for as long as possible, while retaining a high value. At the same time, it strives to design out waste and pollutants by using only clean resources which are eliminating or minimizing the risk of toxic and hazardous substances. So in this model, material flows are circulating. They do not follow a simple, straightforward line. Essentially, materials that are already ex uh, extracted are used again and again and again. And there are multiple strategies, uh, circular strategies, that can help us uh, to work towards this goal. And you most likely know many of these already. These strategies might include sharing, leasing, reusing or repairing products, refurbishing them, and recycling existing materials so they can enter a new, a, a new product cycle. One of the most popular visualizations of the circular economy is the so-called butterfly chart by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. You can see it on your screens right now. The butterfly's left wing repre represents the so-called biological cycle, while the right wing represents the technical cycle. The technical cycle generally contains those materials that are not biodegradable, that cannot be easily processed by natural processes. These are, for example, metals or plastics, conventional plastics, that is. They come from finite resources and do not decompose, as I already said, and this is why their useful life should be prolonged. So in a technical cycles, products, components, and materials are circulating in the economy for as long as possible. 
The most effective technical cycles are those in which the life cycle of the product can be prolonged or extended, for example, through various maintenance opportunities or for repair. Even if uh, the user no longer wants the product, it could still be useful for other potential users. So another possible way to circulate in the technical cycle is through various schemes of reuse or redistribution. Another way, once the product cannot be reused, is to refurbish or remanufacture it. If it's not a viable option, then the product and the material in it can still be recycled. The materials can thus receive either a new function or a new life, and they are again reinserted to the cycle and can circulate through the similar cycles. Look at the second wing of the butterfly, the biological cycle. It contains biodegradable materials such as our food or wood-based products which can be cycled through these cycles. They are renewable but can also be decomposed and by decompositions, for example through composting, can provide new nutrients that can further feed the biological cycle. A good example might be a cotton t-shirt. Imagine it. You can use it, but if you no longer want to use it and the shirt is if, and if the shirt is still in a good condition, uh, you can uh, offer it for second-hand uh, reuse. If the reuse is no longer possible, it can be used in, for example, in the furniture industry as a, a fiber fill in upholstery, and this fiber fill can later be reused in stovel insulation for construction. Each of these alternative uh, reuses for the originally cotton t-shirt is reducing the need for new virgin materials. The butterfly chart shows you how different materials uh, can circulate through different uh, usages and different production cycles. Of course, the kinds of benefits that a company can expect from a circular transition will depend on, on their particular context, resources and capa uh, capacities that they can dedicate to circularity. However, we can generally speak about six or seven uh, common benefits that are ranging from uh, increased resource efficiency uh, with the arising of new innovative opportunities, also concerning competitiveness because the circular economy can unleash uh, new customer segments, but also increase customer loyalty. Importantly, the circular economy can also help help a company prepare for the forthcoming uh, green push for for new regulatory requirements that are coming whether you like it or not the increasing scarcity of non-renewable resources and critical raw materials is going to drive uh, resource prices up and this is going to drive uh, price volatility, which in turn will lead to increased uh, material costs for businesses. So by circulating materials inside uh, an economy or inside a production, production cycle, we are increasing resilience to potential supply shocks. At the same time, using a few fewer virgin materials or new materials, we are um, decreasing associated costs of new materials. So a circular economy is, is a great way to, uh, to lower risk uh, related to resource price volatility, volatility, but also resource availability. If a company decides to go from a linear economy into the circular economy, uh, they are most likely going to uncover great innovation potential for increasing resource efficiency, for energy optimization, and so on. So a circular transition and, and thinking with a circular lens um, about the business model and opportunities is definitely going to show, uh, show ways in which the company can improve, ways uh, which were probably untaught of thinking with the linear economical model in mind.
Another cool thing is that uh, it's not just the company's internal processes uh, that are going to benefit, but it is most likely that uh, the company's customers are going to appreciate the circular transition as well. We now have more and more evidence that, uh, that there is an increasing new customer segment uh, that is willing to, to pay more for products that are, are more environmentally friendly, that are, that are circular. We know this from the European Barometer regular surveys, but from an increasing number of surveys that are looking at um, millennials and gen uh, Generation Z age cohorts uh, behaviors who are increasingly adopting uh, circular behaviors and who are searching for these alternatives. Perhaps one of the most important or convincing reasons to, to go circular is the fact that uh, there is a green and circular regulate, uh, regulatory and policy push um, that is coming from seemingly all the places. The European Union wants to become uh, resource efficient and circular and uh, carbon neutral economy, uh, one uh, that is that can secure good life within the limits of our planet. It is also part of our uh, of our national and, and regional strategies. And uh, so companies who are already thinking about about this will be one step forward and won't be surprised um, when um, when all this is going to when all this is becoming a norm.